looks love it. gorgeous today, by the way. Thank it looks you. so cute. <laughs> I'm not about this morning. <laughs> it's <laughs> chic. Uh, <laughs> fun. We love that. I mean, okay, to be fair, it was really humid and hot and muggy. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to wear like shirt, like shorts and baggy t shirt, mm-hmm. go on a cute little dog, put my hair up in a little claw clip, you know. Yeah. And halfway through, like the first little sprint, which I was maybe out, maybe outside for like ten minutes, maybe. Um, buckets of sweat. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so it's a little frizzy in the back, <laughs> but nobody, nobody's behind me right now. I mean, yeah. there might be little ghosts, but <laughs> you know, the ghosts in our room. That's another topic which we need to do, which is our ghost yeah. stories. We'll do that another. I mean, time. I always have good ghost stories like on deck because. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like I remember those experiences a lot. Yeah, I have. I have a few, but I want to figure out which one would be the most fun to tell. You know, I'm gonna tell the hot springs one. Remember, I told you. Yeah, was like the yeah that one. Yeah. That one. Now that one, I actually felt unsafe. Like yeah. I was like, you know what? I might die. Yeah, that might be it for me. I might die in a bathtub. Which side note, people who die in bathtubs. That to me is the suit. most hideous crime because a bath is where you relax. Yeah. That's where you're supposed to it, be like, mm, sip my little wine, listen to music, reading a book. It's sacrilege <laughs> to kill someone in a bathtub. It's there's it's supposed like, to be okay, their meat in the shower. Yeah, Same with the shower, with which the curtain terrifying, <laughs> terrifying yeah, that, concept. I there's so many times I can't even tell you where I've like ripped the curtain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't got anyone there same 100 yeah. percent same but today we're not talking about <laughs> ghost no, stories we're not stuff. but we might we're do that about... we might film that soon because that actually yeah, sounds I might fun do that one, I... yeah maybe the next filming session you yeah. know that yeah but no today we're gonna be talking about pick me girls now before anyone gets mad we used to be pick me girls we that we realized that they are really annoying yeah we we had an <laughs> and we were like we're we are going to work on ourselves to mm-hmm. fix that change that yeah. um yeah welcome to she knows it with alex and <laughs> so yeah we kind of already did the little introduction to it but yeah. what to you, okay, what is your definition of a pick me girl? So we're on the same page. Yeah. Well, Webster's definition. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My definition of pick me girl is someone who um, has a lot of internalized misogyny, and therefore mm-hmm. um, either plays up the things they like that are more masculine things, traditionally masculine things, um, because they want the attention of guys. Not because they Mm -hmm. just like it. It's fine to like masculine things. I grew up very much a tomboy before I turned into a pick-me-girl briefly. And I would not say I was like, yeah, we had (laughs) quite the arc. And (laughs) I went from like tomboy to pick-me-girl when I was like a young teen. Then I became a girl's girl as time went on that just likes masculine things. So, like, there's definitely, like, there's different ways of just liking these things. It's whenever yeah. they take it to the um, putting other girls down so they seem, mm-hmm. like, better than them. Like, I'm not like yeah. other girls type of girl is a pick-me girl in mm-hmm. my head. What about you? I would say, for me, pick-me girl is someone who inherently puts down women to play up to men mm-hmm. and it kind of also goes into like girls girl yeah which is like another topic but people who will put themselves in positions of power over another girl when a man's involved yeah yeah like i'm one of the guys or one of the bros. Mm-hmm. So you're beneath me. Yeah. In you eyes. just you just don't get it. Like you're not one of the yeah. guys like I am. That's when it's like, yeah. okay, you're Which belittling someone I else. Know any <laughs> You can be friends with guys. I have guy friends. Yeah, right? same. They are some of my like close people. I love chilling with them, hanging out. Mm-hmm. What drives me up a wall? is when a girl self-proclaims I'm one of the bros. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the guys. And then I hear that regurgitated from the guy as though, oh yeah, she's one of the guys. I'm like, "Ah, ah, ah." 
No, no, no. Don't do that. Yeah. We're not doing that today. We're not reinforcing her wants to yeah. be better than other women. Because that's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's really what it comes down to is feeling like there's something inherently wrong with being a woman. And it's mm -hmm. better to be masculine. It's better to be one of the guys. Oh, you're yeah. you're not as naggy as a girl. You're not as high mm -hmm. maintenance as a girl. It's like, mm, no, bitch. She still is. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's just, just it's, it's, it's human. It. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. a woman thing or a man thing. It's yeah. just a human. Having needs is not a bad thing. It's just mm -hmm. human. Everyone has needs and they just come in different shapes and forms. And someone having more mask needs does not make them that that presents femme it does not make mm -hmm. them a better than someone who has femme needs that yeah presents femme you know like it's just it's it's icky to say the least um especially because like i look back and have such secondhand embarrassment for how i used to act oh my god because we both mm -hmm. we both because we i think it just comes with the territory of being a gamer girl yeah because we had a lot of guy friends online and we would get that positive reinforcement from them of like, oh, my God, you're just so cool. You're not like other girls. It's like other girls aren't yeah. cool. Got it. Like it, it gets like that's, drilled that's in your head. Thing. What was so I was never really like one of the pick me girls who are like, oh, I never wear makeup. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, I could never do that. Like I was the one who really went for like the physical appearances. Mm -hmm. I was always the one of like, oh, okay like a lot of the girls in my circle that i like interacted with it's like oh yeah i don't really like them yeah because their interests were a lot more geared towards the traditional like young teenager my whole background with pick me girl was appearance wise i made myself hyper feminine i mean yeah <laughs> uh i made my appearance hyper feminine but i made my interests more catered to what the men in my life and like my friends and mm -hmm. stuff were more interested in and so i was never like super outwardly a pick me because i was a little shy I ain't gonna lie a little <laughs> shy but anytime there was a girl who made me feel insecure about an interest or a hobby or um, being able to relate to one of my friends mm -hmm. more than I could, I would try and one up them in that same thing. Yeah. And that's kind of where I was a pick me, but the pick me's I experience even like today, like my friends, like not acquaintances in my life mm -hmm. they are a lot more of the like you take 30 minutes to do your hair i could never you spend that yeah. much money on clothes i just throw on whatever like i like baggy t-shirts which bitch, i love a good baggy t-shirt too fine. but, don't but sometimes it's, there's a difference between like putting down someone when you're saying something about yourself rather than mm -hmm. just saying something about yourself it's like oh like i'm like i could never spend that much time on like on picking an outfit like no wonder you always yeah. look so great I just throw on the mm -hmm. first thing I see. Like I, yeah. I cannot be bothered. You know, there's a difference between that and like being like. There's oh, different ways you spend of saying it. That much time on your clothes, like yeah. I could my never. My biggest one. My biggest one is in hobbies and like makeup. For yeah. some reason, that's what I experienced more. Do you, I can I tell like a little like recent event that happened? I'm not gonna say names or things. Of course, yeah, yeah. This girl, I think you might be able to pick up who it is. <laughs> I know but exactly who it is. She was just like, oh, I'm one of the guys. And I'm like, oh, yeah, chill. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Whatever. And then we met, mm -hmm. talked, right? We met through somebody else. And she was just like, oh, my gosh, you're wearing makeup? I just thought you looked like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I love makeup. Like, I'm trying out a new style, so I'm not sure how I liked it, right? Mm -hmm. And then she goes, oh, yeah, I could never. Like, I just I just think I can just, you know, go around. Plus, like, everyone I'm around really likes it, but I'm friends with mostly guys. And I'm like, 
<laughs> that makes me visual. Like that makes me cringe inside. Like, and I'm just sitting here. I was waiting for her to like be like a joke. Yeah. But she was so serious, and I, I didn't know how to take it because I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah. I was like, oh yeah. Um, you know, I just I just like makeup. Like that's just mm-hmm. one of my interests. Um. And then she asked me about video games. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, one of my favorite games is, like, The Sims, Stardew Valley, like, Baldur's Gate. Oh, no. Those are my, like, oh, three no. current obsessions. And she was just like, oh, I just play shooters. Like, I just love Overwatch. <laughs> and I'm As like, an Overwatch player, that makes me fucking cringe. <laughs> like, I hate that I'm so like, much. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I, I'm not that big into shooters. I played them when I was younger. But you know i was never really good at them and you know they're a little just too loud for me because sometimes mm-hmm. games and like sound and stuff mm-hmm. and it's a chaotic game i get it yeah yeah and she was just like oh yeah see the sims just seems like really really boring i'm like oh do you not insult her baby yeah. like that <laughs> I was like, for sure. Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, yeah. But anyway, so that was my recent experience. Yeah. And I didn't know this because this girl was older than me. Like, a, a good yeah. good amount older than it, me. It typically is, actually. Like, it, it, like not always, but I've noticed there's, there's a lot more pick-me's in the, like, I'd say, like, mid to late 20s area. Um, where... I feel like nowadays it's a lot more common to like if you are a pick me to have someone be like that's cringe don't fucking do that mm-hmm. be like like just support other people like women and men yeah. like just support them both equally and then when I feel like the that I guess like chunk of uh of young mil- or yeah young millennial but older Gen Z, older I think, Gen is like, Z, like yeah. right on the cusp. Um, I think they grew up in a very, like, if you're not a pick me, like, not a pick me, but like, if you're not into masculine things, then you're like mm-hmm. annoying. Which well, see, I grew up the seeing things. them as teenagers yeah. when we were like young, young teens. I grew up seeing mm-hmm. them as teenagers and wanting to be that. And that's why I was a pick me when I was a young teenager because I see, I, cause I would look I mean, and I would see posts about that kind of stuff yeah and it's just and see ridiculous. now that I'm now that I'm older and also this is advice for the younger girlies if you are a younger girly or you're just a younger a younger girly doesn't matter if you're feminine presenting just young anybody yeah <laughs> honestly girly is gender neutral here this is advice if a girl you know has zero girlfriends like none at all no girl is willing to hang out with this other girl she might be a pick me yeah she might That's, be because yeah it's like i had a lot of guy friends but i still had you and i had another girlfriend mm-hmm. and those that was just my circle right There's some girls, like the girl yeah, I was no, talking about yeah, earlier. No, I know girls like they that too. Strictly only friends with guys. Yeah. And when you ask them, like, oh, do you have any girlfriends? They're like, no, girls are annoying. Like, they're too much to handle. I'm like, you're one yourself. You- <laughs> it's it genuinely is a it is like self misogyny and like self hatred. Yeah. Truly is where it's rooted. Yeah. And it's so like it's so disheartening because it's like you are you are limiting yourself from the things you can like and things you can explore purely mm-hmm. because of outward appearance according to men and not all men yeah, but the society be... that has been existent because of yeah them, you know and also like speculation pure speculation pure speculation <laughs> pure speculation. in my opinion <laughs> in my personal free willed opinion mm-hmm um i think it also reflects on a lot of uh internalized need for male attention and male validation yeah. from early yeah. childhood 100 percent. that's why As i wanted it developed. i get that yeah yeah like it's yeah. it's almost intoxicating like getting male validation when you want male validation and that's that's also another thing is if you're attracted to men mm-hmm. like that you're, you know you're uh heterosexual gay you know but you're attracted to men mm-hmm. And you didn't grow up with that. The pick me energy is strong. 
Wrong. Every every guy friend because I had had a crush on me when I was a pick me, yeah. and I loved it because and I wanted it, that it, because I wanted them mm-hmm. all. I wanted them all to find me the coolest girl they've ever met. Mm-hmm. Because it's like also because you're young and you know you're wanting that attention mm-hmm. and you know you're going through puberty and everything and you're craving that, and so. Now, granted, you're not going to date everyone, but you want to be friends with them because you like the attention of it. You like the affection, Mm -hmm. the, like, being surrounded by that energy, I guess. And a lot of times, the older pick-me's that I interact with now, they all kind of have the same track record when it comes to men in their life, Mm -hmm. relationships, and platonic, and... It's kind of gotten to the point of where I'm like, okay, I think that's a lot of the time the pick me girl base. Yeah, it makes me feel bad for them. I'm like, dude, like, yeah, there's other ways to feel good about yourself than getting male validation. Male validation. Mm -hmm. Do okay. The deconstruction of being a pick me girl, which we can get to in a second if you want to, of like our like when we realize we don't want to be that anymore, and when we started like, mine was fifteen. Mine was, yeah, I think mine was like 14, 15 as well. Yeah. Um, I, we, we can get to, into that in depth if you'd like to in a second. Yeah, for um, sure. I just really quickly want to add this as well. And if you want to add anything else as well to this first part, you can. Um, I just feel like as someone who was in that, you know, position, and you understand mm-hmm. this as well, when you are in that world, it is so easy to stay in that world and it's very hard to get out of that world because you are surrounded by yes men practically like you're surrounded Mm -hmm. by guys who praise you for being different than other girls for being and like the early 2010s like the the 2010s was like the era for memes that would be like normal Mm -hmm. girls me and it'd be like in a baggy t-shirt eating chips and like the other girls would be like a girl with a dress on and lipstick it's like yeah you can be both you can be Mm -hmm. either one it does not matter and being one over the other does not make you any less or more important Mm -hmm. and when when someone starts to realize that it's like so it's so easy to when you're in that space too to like like i remember seeing like uh, like posts and memes and stuff online when I was like a young teen and mm-hmm. seeing people like complain about their girlfriends or like complain about girls and I would be like <laughs> okay I'm not gonna be like that I'm gonna be a cool girlfriend see I grew up where I've always been a lot more glitzy girly glammy mm-hmm. like since I could remember, I was wearing dresses and bows and, like, mm-hmm. sparkly tiaras and just – that's just been my thing. But, I, yeah, I grew up around a lot of people, even in dance, like ballet, mm-hmm. that would almost shame you for being a girly girl. And then when I saw posts like that, like, you know, the more online I got, it really honestly made me feel – like shameful that Mm -hmm. I was like that hyper feminine I guess Mm -hmm. in my outward appearance and so that was why I tried to change my aesthetic Mm -hmm. change my vibe change the way I presented the way I acted like it was really really hard and as you said it became very intoxicating Mm -hmm. because when I started changing I started becoming a lot more likable my friends Mm -hmm. a lot more people wanted to be around me so it's definitely a hard pill to swallow yeah once you kind of take a step back and realize all of that i think that might have caused a little bit of our like we we had a competitive nature with one another when we, yeah when we when we were pick me girls like specifically mm-hmm. that age we had a competitive nature about us ourselves where like yeah. we kind of do like just like little things not like we were never frenemies we were always friends like we really Mm -hmm. did care about each other but it was like inherent like because i think we were kind of each other's only 
female friend for a hot second or like mm-hmm. one of the only female friends that we had with one another mm-hmm. and then see i didn't get my i wasn't friends with my other female friend until 16 yeah you know child was like 16 maybe mm-hmm. 17 i think i was 16 my yeah. and like my childhood best friend that we broke off our friendship when i was like 15 um mm-hmm. she was like not at all girly like she was very she was very mask presenting um mm-hmm. and that i think reinforced it a little bit too she wasn't a pick me girl she wasn't like doing yeah. it for male validation but she also would sometimes make fun of me if i was being girly or being hyper girly um and i don't think they really meant it maliciously but it did mm-hmm. affect me and i think that contributed as well to it i my pick me girl like i know yours was basically trying to be hyper feminine but then also being like the cool girl at the same time mm-hmm. mine was trying to be like the hot effortless girl does that make like the effortlessly hot thrown together hot yeah thrown together hot like kind of a tomboy but like mm-hmm. still hot like still wears makeup yeah. but like is wearing a messy bun and a baggy t-shirt like that was the that was what i went for when i was a pick me mm-hmm. and i just went for like i'm your manic pixie dream girl <laughs> yeah. i am like this 24 7 i wake up with makeup babe yeah. what do you think i don't put it on it's on my face i was born with this yeah what do you think born with filled in eyebrows a little bit of eyeliner and like a bold lip yeah yeah for sure of course we both were also manic pixie dream girls and i think that was honestly yeah. i think that was for me it was the transition out of being a pick me i was a manic pixie dream girl i don't know when that happened in the timeline for you it was the same or different i, I honestly think i was it was always manic pixie dream girl because <laughs> yeah. i i have a little bit of crazy energy yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it's fun yeah but like I've always strived for perfection in mm-hmm. everyone's eyes. I wanted to be the doll mm-hmm. and I wanted to dress myself up to the point of where everybody liked me, which is so bad. Mm-hmm. And so horrible. We both grew up very intense people pleasers as well, which I think mm-hmm. also feeds into the pick me because yeah. it's like on top of being a people pleaser like you just you want everyone to be happy and you want to be perfect according to everyone and you want everyone to like you on top mm-hmm. of that you're which is so you know, unrealistic by the way yeah like it's it's you no one might be able to please a handful of people no one's right? liked by but, everyone yeah no one and no matter how and like you it, oh god and this is a really hard pill to swallow as well accepting the fact that you are the villain in someone's story and there's nothing you can do about it is yeah, really see, now that I'm hard. older, I really don't mind being the villain in someone yeah, else's same. story. I, you know what? Same. Me being the villain in someone else's story triggered a lot of their self-growth that I'm like, you know what? I'm proud of you. Yeah. I don't like you, but I'm proud of you. Yeah. I hope I hope that they're I hope you're doing good, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Like I'm 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 glad that but back I am then, a part of oh, the big no, story. I would have not accepted that. I would have been like, no, I, I have to make what? sure they know that I didn't mean it. Blah, blah, blah. Like, they, like I would I would mm-hmm. profusely apologize and honestly make myself sick sometimes trying to please everyone. Um, and so I think we would like, we would sometimes like people please with each other. We'd have this like competitive mm-hmm. nature with each other that it would be like, I think that's why when we started to like taper off of being pick me's, mm-hmm. we then got like really close again all of a sudden. Because we were yeah. like, oh, we're finally ourselves again. Like, we could, like, breathe. Because yeah. it was like, we met when we were pretty much just ourselves. And then we went mm-hmm. through our pick-me arc. And then we came out of it and we were like, oh, we could breathe again. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, we were just like, yeah. okay, cool. We're not we're not competing with each other as much anymore. And we're not, like, mm-hmm. we don't have this preconceived notion that we have to be better than anyone else. Or that we have to please mm-hmm. everyone. Um, and I think... It took a little while for us to, like, get on the same page of not competing because I think it was just, like, so ingrained in our friendship for so long because, like, we were in the same – we were in the same, like, like social media sphere. We both were Mm -hmm. dancers. We both – you know, like, there's, like, so many layers to – We had a lot of, like, hobbies and backgrounds that were just the same. Yeah. And just also inherently by nature, we are both very ambitious people Mm -hmm. and – we always strive for goals. And I think when we were younger, we just set those goals in the wrong thing. Yeah. 
and so as we got older and as our also our, i think also what really played a part in it too was our interest changed yeah. in our like groups i guess mm-hmm. that we mainly hung out in changed mm-hmm. as well yeah I think that's what also gave us kind of the break we needed to also just mature and I guess also become okay with ourselves, like yeah. just ourselves. We, we got a lot more confidence in ourselves and that that helped mm-hmm. a lot. Um, and I'm so glad because there was part of me that was really worried when I stopped being a pick me because we weren't talking as much during that like, very brief period towards the end of that i was worried mm-hmm. that i would reach back out to you and you'd still be like hardcore pick me and i was so <laughs> worried and then then when i reached out and it ended up being like really like oh we're on the same page we both have like grown out of that phase cool it was mm-hmm. so nice but like there are people from that time period that like i knew that are still in that mental zone and that's that's okay it's their journey you know but yeah. I just hope that they're not making themselves sick over trying to please everyone, specifically yeah. please men. I just, I was like the one biggest thing that I would give advice for, for someone, if this resonates with you, mind, mind you, this is not, if anything resonated with you, this entire podcast episode, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Because it's a phase in your life. There's, there's going to be millions of phases in your life, mm-hmm. like micro phases, long phases, like there's going to be different phases. Mm-hmm. But I would just say, if any of this was like, oh, I kind of have that or I kind of do that, I would say self-reflection mm-hmm. is something that you might want to prioritize. Because I started prioritizing that when I was about 15, 16, end of 15, beginning of 16. Yeah. And... You know, I started surrounding people, like, surrounding myself with people who had more of my interests, like, my inherent interests of, like, super girly, pretty stuff, like, more just, I guess, grounded women Mm -hmm. in themselves. Like, they were confident in themselves. And that was all I was surrounded with for months. Like, just, just that. And so that kind of was my beginning of, like, oh, okay, I'm a girl's girl. Mm -hmm. And... I'm just going to be myself. I'm going to stop wanting male validation, like really stop wanting anyone's validation. It's like, if you like me, great. If you don't, great. I don't really care. I'm just going to present myself how I want to yeah. present myself. And then I'm going yeah. to be okay with that. I'm going to be okay with the repercussions of, I can't be everyone's manic pixie dream girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, I think that was my turning point but i would say that advice of self-reflection is something i wish i heard mm-hmm. when i was younger um especially in high school yeah. especially in high school yeah i i think that like what was your like going coming to this to- topic now of like mm-hmm. the end of the the phase the pick me phase yeah what was your like oh moment or if you didn't have an oh moment like what was the gradual like realizations you were having of like I don't want to be like this anymore when I went to dance overseas with a dance company um it was pretty much all girls like Mm -hmm. day in day out was just very like the girls that I was surrounding myself with were the girls that were like me and I just kind of naturally gravitated towards them yeah. there were obviously some a lot of a lot of pick me's in dance but there were pick me's and they were like really tomboy people um but i was attracted to and like wanted to be friends with people who had my own interest even if i didn't know that but i never felt so comfortable being myself and being the like girly girl glitzy like just purely presenting myself the way that I wanted to and not having to worry about a male liking that Mm -hmm. because the girls that I was around really liked my personality and I liked theirs. And that was probably my moment when I was realizing this is the most fun I've had 
with people Mm -hmm. in a long time. Yeah. And so that was kind of my beginning of that era. A lot of the girls that I thought were friends in the beginning of that summer camp, right when I was touring and everything, were pick-me girls. They weren't girls' girls. They were very mean girls. Mm -hmm. And... Then at the end of that summer camp, I wasn't friends with them anymore. You know, we had fights. Like, I really was able to figure out the behaviors of a pick-me girl because Mm -hmm. I experienced it firsthand, like, in a very, very inflated, magnified way Mm -hmm. because I was with them day in, day out, 12 hours a day. Like, that was, I I think that's the closest to my, like, aha moment Mm -hmm. of... I was like that. I don't think I'm like that anymore, but I'm just going to kind of take a step back from everything and just keep building on myself. And then, you yeah. know, I retired from dance um, a year after that, little, little, little over a year after that. And so I removed myself from a lot of the pick me girls I was around. And I was just kind of kept my circle really small. And that was the time when you and I really weren't like super close Mm -hmm. and I was friends with one of my guy friends and then one of my other girlfriends and those are the two people I kind of hung out with the most and just kind of worked on myself worked on accepting who I was and becoming comfortable and honestly it was a huge battle of insecurity Mm -hmm. as well yeah because when you don't have friends, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, maybe am I just unlikable? At one point I was like, oh, maybe I'm just too ugly. No one wants to be friends with me or no one wants to like me. Because, (laughs) because there was a point, there was a point of where any of the guys I had interested in romantically wouldn't like me. Mm. And I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's my personality. Maybe I am too much for them. Right. Mm. And I was just like, hmm. No. 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 <laughs> They're just boring. Yeah. They're just boring. That's it. Go find less. They're just boring. If you if yeah. I'm too much, go find less. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so I say that that would be my aha eureka moment. Yeah. But I mean, it was it took a lot of years to become okay with me. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Coming from an almost 21-year-old, um if you are in that 15-16 realm, it is not too late. Don't worry, you can change. <laughs> yeah, you are forever. It'll you can better. change at any age, truly. Like I fully yeah. believe that. Like it's not a matter of like. And sometimes oh, it takes longer, and sometimes it's just like a light switch, right? It yeah. just happens. So, you know, take our experiences with a grain of salt, but definitely, if you have kind of realized, oh, maybe I act that way, maybe you might want to consider taking a step back from those people and just kind of reflecting Reflecting. on yourself yeah yeah but what was your aha moment you had one I had like a couple small aha moments that that became added up yeah yeah my first one was I was watching I don't know if you ever watched the show it this was the time period I was uh attempting to get into modeling it was when I did the fashion show so Mm -hmm. like 14 yeah and I I was watching a show. I forgot what it's called, but it's with uh, Yolanda Hadid, uh, Bella Hadid, and Gigi Hadid's mom. She, like, was a part of this, Mm -hmm. like, show where, like, teen girls would come to this, like, boot camp thing, and they would – and and their mothers. Their mothers would come, too. Um, Mm -hmm. And they would, like, compete to be, like – basically America's Next Top Model, but, like, for young teens. Um, And, like, who – the person who won would get signed with MGM, which was, like – it's like one of the biggest modeling agencies. So I watched mm-hmm. the show and there was one of these, one of the girls, I don't remember her name, but she was like a pick me girl. And at this point I was a pick me girl too. And she said at one point, I can't be around all these girls. Like I don't have friends who are girls. Like I only have guy friends. Like girls are so dramatic. Like, I don't want to be here. And when it first happened, I was like, same girly. Like, I agreed with her. And then as time went on during the show, I realized, like, I was like, oh, she's being really mean to the girls. And then I saw her, 
like kind of just like I don't know, just being the type of person that, and obviously it's reality TV, so like probably yeah. probably was turned up a couple notches. Probably not how this girl mm-hmm. is in real life, especially maybe not nowadays. Who knows? But I just remember in the deal it feeling like she was the most dramatic out of everyone, even though she was the one that said that girls are dramatic and that mm-hmm. she hates how girly and frivolous and like she's a tomboy and like you know like all these things and I realized how from an outside perspective how that looks how it looks yeah yeah and I was like that's embarrassing (laughs) yeah (laughs) genuinely I was like that's embarrassing and Mm -hmm. sometimes that's the wake up call you need is seeing someone do something you do and you're like that's embarrassing I'm never doing that again but it was it wasn't just embarrassment I felt genuinely like disheartened with how she was treating the other girls in the show that I was like Mm -hmm oh, I never want to treat another girl that way or anyone that way. And so I started self-reflecting a little bit more. And that was like the beginning of like me kind of realizing that was also the beginning of me starting to heal from my ED. Mm -hmm. So because I also had an ED all during my pick me phase and lingering outside of it slightly because yeah, it's an ED. It doesn't just go away overnight. Um, I only, I would say the past two years have actually like I would say I'm recovered but like even then I still have days that are not great um but that was the beginning of like me realizing oh that's not that's how I'm acting and that's not 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 attractive as in like attractive but like that's not I don't find that attractive as like I'm not yeah, attracted to that energy. Trait. Yeah. Yeah. And so I kind of like started like having more of like a inner like I, I started analyzing the things I would mm-hmm. do that were like that. And then I had a moment where I started to kind of act in a pick me esque way out of like um out of just like pure like reaction like subconsciously Mm -hmm. and then I thought back to what I had seen and I was like huh I don't like acting like this and I realized that acting like that was genuinely it was like it was almost like a crutch for me Mm -hmm. because I felt like if I don't act like the perfect girl then I won't have friends yeah because all these guys won't want to be my friend anymore and I was right they didn't want to be my friends anymore because they liked that I was basically a manic pixie dream girl for them that they were best friends with that mm-hmm. a lot of them had crushes on. I didn't realize at the time, but now I look back and I'm like, they definitely had a crush on you. Like, I just thought I was ugly and so I didn't think anyone would like me. And it's just, it's just really like, it's disheartening because my like worries were right. I did lose a lot of friends through it, but I gained so much more through it and like so many more connections mm-hmm. and like a lot of inner strength with myself. Um, yeah. There were also many moments of like coming into contact with pick me's in real life that I was like, I would relate to them and then they'd act mean to me and I'd be like, yeah. oh oh like I would realize that like they were on an even deeper level of pick me than I was and it made me it made either it made like partially my competitive nature come out but also I was like but I don't want them to feel this way like I don't want to treat Mm -hmm. them this way like why would they treat me this way um and like little things like that so like not one big thing but I definitely get started with seeing pick me's and how they act yeah. and how they treat kind of the me. mirror like, literally I took a I took a look in the mirror I didn't like what I saw and so I said yep. I'm gonna change it <laughs> that's yep. what happened but honestly that's a lot of times what people need to change yeah is they need to see a reflection of what they are yeah you know another layer to like realizing like oh I don't want to act this way anymore is mm-hmm. I got a boyfriend who mm-hmm. liked my personality. 
that didn't like the front that I put up. He literally said he was like, I didn't like the front you put up when like we first met. Because I we started dating like because I was like 14 when I started realizing like, oh, shit, I'm a pick me and I don't want to be a pick me anymore. Um, and so we started dating uh, like probably like eight, nine months after that. Mm-hmm. And I was 15. And but I, I knew it was like at the, the beginning of the year when I realized this, I was like mid 14 and then 15. And then I started dating him. And I realized that guys are just people and they having their praise doesn't mean anything. Yep. It it took me getting praise 24 seven to realize, oh, okay. Like I love my boyfriend. I love when he praises me. I still to this day, I like, I love like the little things like, like when he just says like, like, oh, you did a good job on that. You know, that's great. Like, I love that kind of energy. I love, I love, I love attention. You know? Yeah. But it's not like my world has to revolve around getting it. And I realized once, like, I was with a guy constantly, I was like, you're just a dude. You're just, you're just a man. You're just a boy. Like, I really, like, put it in perspective. I was like, I'm just a girl. No, when you, yeah, when you peel back the layers, everybody's human. It's like everyone's, everyone's a skeleton. You know, like yeah. everyone's a skeleton with skin and and bones and nervous See, systems. For me, it's like the older I got, I didn't date really um, until I was 18 mm-hmm. around. And the reason was because I was still maturing yeah. to the point where I wanted to well, to the point of where I got to a level where I was like, I could share my life with somebody. Mm-hmm. And with my boyfriend, um, when we first kind of met, it was his initial feeling towards me was just like, I've never met someone that's so confident, put together, mm-hmm. like sure of themselves, ambitious, you know? somebody that's almost has no flaws as far as like personality wise now go i got some <laughs> but <laughs> they're, like, they're in the back he doesn't back gotta back. know that he doesn't like, gotta know that. <laughs> it's like he, he doesn't even know that it's fine he'll find them he'll find them eventually you yeah. know i mean i do at the end of the aisle about. then he'll find them <laughs> yeah no it's like once the marriage contract is signed yeah um and filed like you can't take it he's a little quirks, uh, you know that yeah. <laughs> that's fine it'll come out um but yeah it was like i realized around 18 that male attention got annoying to me because when i became legal i got a lot of male attention and i'm just yes! like this is annoying yes like oh my god why are you co- like why are you complimenting me why are you I'm calling a, a, me doing a good job I'm not a like minor anymore <laughs> like, no. like I, I purposefully wouldn't I'm a minor, want to even though outwardly wasn't. show that i'm grown so i wear no makeup baggy clothes to hide my womanness and <laughs> and it's like genuinely sometimes i'm like i'm a minor i'm actually a kid I'm minor. I don't know why you're flirting with me. What are you doing? Yeah, one hundred percent. And like, but which is so weird because we always, always, always when we were younger I wanted, wanted to be our age. When I was younger. Yeah, but then when I was eighteen, it was like a f- flip switch, yeah. and I was just like, okay, this is actually kind of annoying yeah. because, like, you know, the occasional compliment from just like a random, yeah. like a random guy being like, oh. I just want to say you're so beautiful, right? Yeah, and then Lisa's that great. You know, your hair looks beautiful. Yeah, see, you know that. That, kind of that I'm not saying that complimenting a woman is like creepy in any it's in any way, but it's just like the. <laughs> it's it's just when they do it, mm-hmm. but it's like really intense. Yeah, it's like, not. It's not get what is said. It's the way it's said. Like, mm-hmm. there's a difference between saying, "You look beautiful." I just wanted to say that, like, you just yeah. look beautiful. And then have a and, nice day. And, then... and, yeah, have a nice day. And you look beautiful. How are you doing? Yeah. Where are you See, going? Thing, are you going alone? Thing, 
Where's your I... friends? <laughs> <laughs> that that my thing. The difference was. It was the first time a guy said to me, I was out with my friends. It's the mm-hmm. first time a guy said to me, you were the sexiest girl I've ever seen in my life. My response was, ew. Yeah. <laughs> Which we would have loved what? to be told that when we were 15, <laughs> pick me girls. <laughs> yeah. But when like, I was younger, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah. But the older I got, the more I'm like, I really don't. Like when my boyfriend says that, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's different from it's it's 100 percent different from your boyfriend. It's very yeah. different when you get compliments from your boyfriend, or and like I hear the the argument all the time of like, well, why is it different when girls flirt with girls and not guys? What's well, like as a bisexual woman, okay? When you're flirted with with a girl, it's a different type of pick me. I will be a pick me for women wow. all day long, okay? I will be a pick me for women all day long because you know what they like? They like when I wear fun little outfits. They like when I'm myself. They like when I'm they they like when I look gay. I love that. I love that. There was there was a woman. I was with Gabe. I was with my now fiance. We were just dating at the time. And I was out at a bookstore and mm. the perfect queer place, you know? And <laughs> I love like a little Barnes and Nobles. Literally, yeah. By the way, me and my boyfriend were at a Barnes, Barnes and Nobles, and we saw this goth couple making out in the corner. Period. Reading, reading. What was it? Quantum physics, like for dumb, for like the dummies. Quantum, Quantum physics, physics for dummies. I'm like, dummies? what is that? That's hilarious. That is and I was so funny. At that, and, I'm, and I asked my boyfriend, I was like, "What's that book?" And he was like, "Quantum physics." And I was like. They were in quantum Are they in the math and, section? Yes. And he was just like, yeah, you don't need to be in that section. Don't worry. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I am not a math girly. I am not smart I. in math. Hot girls are not but smart. Like, are not you know math. what? I will it's listen okay. to my boyfriend talk about cute little numbers. Numbers. Silly little numbers. Hey, I'm getting decoding. Girl, That's enough for me. Remember. Literally, stress me out. they stress me out too. And uh, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just choose to stress myself out apparently. But we were at, we were at a bookstore. Imagine yeah. a Barnes and Noble, right? No. And Gabe was checking out. He was like finishing checking out. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go throw away our cups. Because like we had cups from the, yeah. the cafe inside of the bookstore, right? Mm-hmm. So I go over to the cafe area to throw away the cups. And there's this girl. I can tell she's queer immediately. She's got like a little pixie. She's like so okay. cute. She's got like purple hair. Oh, no, Ripped you can, jeans. You can tell. Like cuffed. Yeah cuffed cuffed jeans she was gay right if she's not gay <laughs> ally ally and yeah. so <laughs> no i mean like i would have gone off it like with the pink pixie or the purple oh, pixie 100 100 exactly mm-hmm. and so i threw away the cups and she goes she looks me up and down and at first i thought she was gonna say something mean because i'm so used to that with one <laughs> one. like and she, she she looks me up and down and she goes you're so cute hello (laughs) i i don't think i've ever been so flustered in my entire life and Mm. because i wasn't expecting it i was like oh she looks really cool it's literally what i thought in my head as i threw away the cups and i was like well time to go back to my boyfriend Mm. and she she like goes she like looks me up down as i'm throwing away my trash and goes Uh you are so cute and i smile her i'm like oh thank you and she's like go have a good day and i was like you too. <laughs> I walked away. Yeah. Skip it. And then I told you Gabe, I was like, a girl flirted with me. <laughs> Every time a woman compliments me, mm-hmm. it's so much different it's than a the, man compliments me. It's the delivery. Me. It truly is. It's something with the riz, you know? It's like, I it's, will say, it's a different le- before layer. We, yeah, before we end off today's episode. Oh, yeah. I'll end it off on this cute little story. I was at the mall and they had a trunk showcase of jewelry expensive jewelry mm-hmm. i'm talking twenty seven thousand dollars for a little necklace cute little necklace Jeez. right and so it was this older man i'm talking 50s but he was a dilf a dilf dilf mm-hmm. and then two women 
So I walked up there with my mom, right? We're shopping for mom. And we were just looking, browsing. And the man was just like, would you like to try on this necklace? I think it would match your eyes really well. I'm like, oh, for sure. Great. Yeah. Right? I'm like, oh, you're trying to sell me something? You can try it on me. I'll be the little man again, right? <laughs> Whatever. $27,000 on my neck. I'll probably never feel that in my life, so why not? <laughs> why not right <laughs> and so then i put it on me and i was wearing it and a woman walks by and she was like you wear that so well you're so gorgeous walks away she wasn't a sales rep she yeah. was just a random woman in the store i'm like Perfect. oh oh wow right <laughs> and then necklace comes off we go to a different one mm-hmm. and then the man turns to me and he was like you clearly know how to style jewelry. I think this piece would look really pretty on you. I just want to see what it looks like. And I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> Again. Put it on me. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Another woman walks by. And she was just like. She looked at me and she was just like. Is that your daughter? Dressing my mom. My mom was like, yeah. She was like, she is so gorgeous. You did such a good job on her. Walks away. <laughs> did such a good like, job on her. You had bacon her in your your stomach for nine months, 20 years ago? Good job. Right? Good job. Right? Anyway, so yeah, I just have to say, compliments can go a long way. But Mm -hmm. once you get out of that pick-me era... I love compliments. Yeah, that pick-me era, you stop fiending for them. You stop wanting them, craving them, needing them. Yeah, it just is like a little cherry on top. It means so much more. Yeah, it really does. Once you Mm -hmm. let go of like, oh, I need to be hot. I need to look this way. I need to do X, Y, Z. And mm-hmm. you just like exist as an individual, and you just oh, so you like get wear hotter. what you like. You get hotter. You get hotter because then you have confidence, and confidence is hot. Yeah. Confidence See, is so okay. hot. All I'm gonna say, me now versus like seventeen year old me, eighteen year old me, mm-hmm. different kind of hot. Mm-hmm. I was cute, like yeah. okay, but now it's like could be a man if i wanted i don't choose to be <laughs> but i could it's the mm-hmm. option yeah yeah close on the table yeah. yeah i like the buffet as you should as yeah. you should the buffet is delicious i love a buffet but see i never accept it in Baldur's gate when Raphael offers it up i'm just like mm. <laughs> couldn't be me speaking of next week's episode yeah. is Baldur's Gate 3 Cushions Part 2 because we have another crush we have another yeah. crush Ooh, and then a potential one. Oh, okay okay because yeah. I was looking at him a little bit when we were last playing and I was like oh, hmm. I think I know who you're talking about I think I know who you're talking it's about it's the man bun it's the man bun mm-hmm. the man bun in Baldur's Gate that's what it is Yeah, it's a pattern for you Man bun. Man yeah. buns in Baldur's Gate. It's a pattern. Anyways. Which is nice hair. Yeah. A nice True. set of hair. True. Nice hair. <laughs> nice head of hair. Nice yeah. head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> we love Anyways, a good head. <laughs> we love a good head of hair. What are yeah. y'all thinking about? Yes. We'll Anyways. see you guys next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and follow us on all of our social medias. Including uh, Instagram and TikTok, just uh, she knows a pot, and then all <laughs> <laughs> all podcast streaming services except for Apple. Sorry, Apple. Yeah, we love you, yeah. Apple. We love you, Apple. But yeah, it's too but, default. Um, yeah, but we're on Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, yeah. Podcast Index, all all of the other, I mean, all it, literally yeah. almost every single one besides Apple Podcasts we are on. Yep. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to comment if you, you know Pick Me Girl, have different experiences. Tell me your you personal are former stories. Pick Me Girl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Yeah. I want to know. Love to know. Rate us five stars if you're listening to this episode. And we'll see you guys next week, next Tuesday. Bye.